All right, so a little while ago, I posted a video appropriately titled Athlean X More Garbage Pull-Up Advice. I explained exactly why the advice given was total fucking bullshit, but it's apparent to me, based on the comments that I received in response to my video, that those who watched my video and took the time to comment couldn't comprehend what was said. And there's one comment in particular that I want to shine light on because it illustrates to me that the person who wrote it either does not know what the fuck they're talking about or possibly English is not their first language. So I'm gonna read you the comment and then I'm gonna completely dismantle it. I'll show you the comment first. It's from someone whose screen name is Blue Gill Greg. And the reason I wanna show it to you is because it's likely if he ever sees this video, he's just gonna go back and delete the comment. So I want you to know that at one point in time, it really was there. So there's the video there, Athlean X, more garbage pull-up advice. And there's the comment, Blue Gill Greg. So I'm gonna read you the comment and I'm just gonna completely dismantle it. First sentence, the brachioradiali contribute when doing pull-ups pronated grip. Second sentence, Jeff points out that when the brachioradiali fail before the lats fail, it's the brachioradiali limiting the number of reps that can be performed. Third sentence, for most people, chin-ups really are easier because the biceps and brachioradiali together can contribute more force in supination rather than in pronation. Second paragraph, preliminary scapula stabilization helps one to do more and better reps. Second sentence, this increased range of motion and higher number of reps accelerate the development of functional strength as well as density, size, and innervation. Third sentence. When I made this tweak, I started pulling up past my chin to my sternum with a more explosive rise and was able to do a longer isometric hold and a slower eccentric descent with more reps. Final sentence. I also became able to do weighted reps. So let's start at the beginning. The brachioradiali contribute when doing pull-ups, pronated grip. The brachioradialis is an elbow flexor. It contributes anytime elbow flexion is taking place. Its capacity to produce force is greatest with a neutral grip. So much so that when elbow flexion is taking place, irrespective of whether or not you're using an overhand or underhand grip, it's going to try to rotate the wrist back to a more neutral position because this is the position in which it can contribute most because that's where its capacity to produce force is at its highest. So you're not doing much for your case by stating that the brachioradiali contribute when doing pull-ups. Second sentence. Jeff points out that when the brachioradiali fail before the lats fail, it's the brachioradiali limiting the number of reps that can be performed. First off, just because Jeff points something out doesn't mean he knows what the fuck he's talking about. Does he explain why the brachioradialis would fail before the lats? Do you want to know why? Because it would help partially explain why chin-ups are easier than pull-ups. Would it be because the brachioradialis is receiving most of the tension and doing most of the work, therefore it's going to fail first? But why would it receive most of the tension and do most of the work? Would it be because it's firing hard first and becoming the prime mover? Because the prime mover is the first muscle to fire hard. It receives most of the tension and does most of the work. What do you think that's going to do for performance if a muscle becomes the prime mover? It's going to become a limiting factor. Strengthening the brachioradialis or the biceps won't take you very far because this is a long-term technical issue that needs to be addressed. Strengthening small muscles like the brachioradialis and the biceps, which have a very low ceiling as is, does not address the technical issue that this individual would be having if those small muscles are firing hard first. Now the third sentence starts out strong, but then just turns into an epic fail. For most people, chin-ups really are easier. This I agree with. The explanation is total fucking bullshit. Because the biceps and brachioradiali together can contribute more force in supination rather than in pronation. How much more force? A couple pounds more force? They can produce a couple pounds more force with an underhand grip than an overhand grip. That's why chin-ups are easier. It has nothing to do with elbow flexion. This is an example of someone not being able to differentiate correlation from causation. If it was about the elbow flexors, the neutral grip would be easiest because the sum of the four primary elbow flexors is greatest with a neutral grip, but it's not about the elbow flexors. You want to know why chin-ups are easier? Number one, what's the primary muscle that you would want to impose a demand upon when selecting a pull-up or a chin-up in the first place? Is it the lat? What is the lat responsible for? Shoulder extension, shoulder adduction, extension of the spine, internal rotation of the arm, bunch of different things. But what job does it do best? Where is its capacity to produce force greatest? Shoulder extension. What does the underhand grip do? Puts the elbow in front of the body. When you pull down, you're performing shoulder extension. It forces you to perform shoulder extension more so than an overhand grip, which would facilitate a flaring of the elbow, 
abduction and adduction to occur, and the lat's capacity to produce force is not as great when performing that direction of effort. What effect do you think it'll have on performance if the biggest, strongest muscle is forced to do the job that it does best? Number two, the muscle being stretched the most is generally recruited the most. Because the lat's an internal rotator, the underhand grip an externally rotated position of the shoulder that accompanies that pre-stretches the lat. The lat is stretched to a greater degree. What effect do you think it will have on performance if the biggest, strongest muscle involved in the lift is recruited the most? Number three, a muscle's capacity to produce force is lowest when it enters its shortest position. Because the lat's an internal rotator, the underhand grip and the external rotation at the shoulder that accompanies that prevents the lat from getting into the range in which it is weakest. What effect do you think it'll have on performance if the biggest, strongest muscle is forced to work within the range in which its capacity to produce force is near its highest and it cannot get into the range in which its capacity to produce force is at its lowest? Number four, the externally rotated position at the shoulder creates a more stable joint. There is torque. Stability is a prerequisite to force production. What effect do you think it'll have on performance if the major joint that the biggest, strongest muscle passes through is more stable? Number five, the underhand grip cleans up a lot of the technical issues that people will be having that result in smaller, weaker muscles like the brachioradialis and the biceps firing hard first, receiving most of the tension and doing most of the work. What effect do you think it'll have on performance if you can clean up the technical issues that result in smaller, weaker muscles having to do more work and placing that stress onto the biggest, strongest one? So the underhand grip places the biggest, strongest muscle in a position to do the job that it does best, pre-stretches it so it can be recruited the most, prevents it from entering the range in which it is weakest, creates a more stable joint that the biggest, strongest muscle passes through and cleans up the technical issues that result in smaller, weaker muscles becoming the prime mover. And you want to tell me that the reason chin-ups are easier than pull-ups is because the biceps and brachioradialis can produce a couple more pounds of force with an underhand grip as opposed to an overhand grip? That's called not being able to see the force for the trees. And the second paragraph illustrates that this motherfucker does not know what the fuck he's talking about. Preliminary scapula stabilization helps one to do more and better reps. Yes, preliminary stabilization of anything will improve performance because stability is a prerequisite to force production. But if you even want to go there, if you even want to bring that up, start at the beginning. Start at the core. Start at the spine. Because if the spine is not stable, how stable can the scapula be? How stable can the limbs be? Now, I'm not suggesting that the spine wouldn't be stable, but if you're even going to go there, if you're even going to bring that up, Start at the fucking beginning. The increased range of motion and higher number of reps. In relation to what? Increased range of motion in relation to what? Higher number of reps in relation to what? Accelerate the development of functional strength. Functional is a relative term. It depends on what you're training for. As well as density, size, and innervation. Density and size can be improved a number of different ways. And innervation means to supply nerves too. The fact that you use that term completely out of context illustrates to me that you don't even know what the fucking word means. You likely threw it in there to sound smarter than you are and didn't expect to get called out on it. You're the exact type of person that I'm talking about. When I say, when you learn from someone who doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about, you end up with a greater populace of individuals inhabiting the earth that do not know what the fuck they're talking about. And if you think that's harsh or you take that offensively, I'm going to say the same thing to you that Conor McGregor said to Joe Rogan after he knocked out Eddie Alvarez to become the first ever simultaneous two-division champion in UFC history. I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody because the double champ does what the fuck he wants. You know, Jim Carrey once said, you can fail at what you don't want. So you might as well take a chance on doing what you love. For me, that's providing people with information for free, real information, good information, to empower them, to give them a better understanding of how things are so they can make the best decision for themselves to get better results than they otherwise would. And I'm not fucking sorry for that. As I've said before, if you want to learn more about training to build muscle, get stronger, lose fat, look better, perform better, 
all that fucking shit. Do yourself a favor, Bluegill Greg. Click the fucking button at the bottom of the screen you're looking at. Subscribe to the channel. Support this motherfucker right here. And this motherfucker right here is going to continue to absolutely bring it.